Well, so Greg Fahey, the, the, the professor out um, in California who's doing this with patients and published with Steve Horvath, they're seeing a couple of years retreat in age in, in 12 months of treatment with a c- combination of, of three factors that we discussed in an earlier episode. But this is just the beginning. This is the, the early days of flight. Uh, we're just learning how this works. But very rapidly over the next few years, we're going to learn what else can reverse the age of the body. Certainly the blood clock, which is what's being used right now. And there are reports of people going back 10, even 20 years with certain treatments. So this is a, a golden age for aging research. I didn't realize it when I started out in my career, I didn't expect to be talking about age reversal. I thought, oh yeah, we'll, we'll slow down aging and that'll be the best if we're lucky. We're in a world that for me is, is science fiction already. We're way beyond my expectations, which is super exciting. The other thing that you're working on and that a lot of people are really excited about is this idea of an epigenetic reset of biological age. This is stuff that you're doing in your lab right now. Let's let's talk about taking mice and, and reversing their biological age. Right, so we're, we're talking about a gene therapy. We discovered that there are found that there are three genes that are normally turned on in embryos that keep them young that we could turn on again in the adult animal uh, and in human cells. So it works in both both species. But in the mice, we could manipulate them to see what happens when you rejuvenate the tissues using these three genes. What we And the genes are? Uh, well, they're, they're called OCT4, SOX2 and KLF4. These are what are called transcription factors, proteins that bind to DNA and turn on genetic programs. And they're part of this series of genes that um, people call the Yamanaka factors. Yes. So Yamanaka, Shinya Yamanaka from Japan won the Nobel Prize in 2016 for the discovery of five genes, three of which I just mentioned. There are two others that were able to take cells, an adult cell back to a pluripotent stem cell stage, very like basically age zero. And then you could, we do use these cells to build other tissues. Um, they can be turned into nerve cells and muscle, but you don't want to do that in the body. You'll, you'll become the world's largest tumor. So we found that a combination of three of these genes and leaving out the other two dangerous ones was a perfect way to reset the age of the body without causing cancer. And it worked better than we could even predict it. We put these genes using a virus um, into the eye, for example. We could do the whole body as well, but let's focus on the eye. You did it into the eye of a mouse. It's a mouse. Yeah. Uh, we hope in a couple of years we'll be testing our first human And we're right now, we've done mice, we're now doing non-human primates. So we're getting closer, but in the mice, it was just a stunning result, which is a mouse that's had its optic nerve damage or a mouse that has glaucoma, which is pressure in the eye that causes blindness, affects millions of people around the world, or just old age. These mice were essentially blind. We then put the virus in with these three genes, could turn on these three genes, OS and K for short. And four weeks later, those cells, the retinal cells, the nerve cells that go to the brain, went back in time, they became young again, reset their age according to the Horvath clock. Their gene expression patterns, which means the genes that were dysregulated, went back to being regulated perfectly for a nerve cell, and the mice got their vision back. We actually cured blindness in those mice, which was a stunning result. We also showed that the systems that reset the clock, there are enzymes that control DNA methylation called TETs. Without those, we didn't get vision restoration and the clock didn't go back. So what that tells us is that the clock going backwards is doable. There is a reset switch in the body and that the clock is part of that system. And this all sounds, I I know to people who haven't heard about it at first, it sounds sort of futuristic and and crazy. This was the cover story on the journal Nature. Yeah, December 2020, we were um, fortunate enough to get the covers issue. Check out my summarized longevity secrets ebook. It's a dream for any scientist. And the title that they had on the cover was Turning Back Time and a picture of an eyeball with a clock hand going. Yeah, that was one of the highlights of my career. And what's happened since is there's been a whirlwind of interest in this from scientists around the world, um, investors. There's more than 20 billion with a B, $20 billion being raised to, to look at this actual phenomenon of aging reset. And a lot of scientists are turning their attention towards understanding how this works um, and even mimicking this gene therapy with little molecules, perhaps plant molecules or drugs that are on the market already so that one day, hopefully in the next five to 10 years, we could take a pill or rub a cream on our skin, not just to slow aging, but to truly reset the age of the body. Between then and and now, there's obviously a lot of work to do. We've seen this effect in the eyes of mice. Um, you're working on other systems within a mouse as well. Well, we are, and in humans, I should say. We're, we're trying to go as quickly as we can. We've found that the reset works in other parts of the eye. We can restore vision in mice that have uh, what's called retinal degeneration, or macular degeneration. 
We also have uh, skin reversal for humans and mice. And we've even uh, built little mini brains. We grow these little organoids out of human skin. We give them Alzheimer's disease. These little brains get dementia and we can reset the age of those mini brains and they get their electrical activity back. So this is the beginnings of work that I hope will mean that we can reverse the age of the brain and other tissues and diseases of old age, like Alzheimer's, heart disease, even cancer will go away. What this would look like in practice, presumably at some time in the future, would be a course of treatment, right? Like you have experienced some degree of aging, you decide, hey, it's time for me to take care of this. You go in, you have this gene therapy, the, and then these genes are basically turned on inside your body to do to do their work. That's right. And we built the system in the virus so we could turn it on with an antibiotic, doxycycline. And the patients that we treat, uh, if we treat them, will take a course of antibiotics to turn on the reprogramming. So we can turn it on for, say, four to eight weeks. We can measure their vision. When they get their vision back again, they stop the antibiotics then they age out again, maybe another decade. And then all they get in the mail is another course of antibiotics to restore their vision again. A lot of people are gonna be really concerned by this idea of like the, like gene therapy, um, but there are, as you noted, like some other avenues that we might get a very similar result. Greg Fahey's work um, is aimed at this same idea of, of an epigenetic reprogramming without the genetic therapy. He's doing this through some pretty simple chemicals. Yeah, he, so he's in California and he uh, used three treatments. Uh, it's called the TRIM type trial, and it included metformin, growth hormone, and DHEA, another hormone. And so growth hormone will rebuild tissues, uh, and that gives a, a response in the body that the times are good. But he also counteracted that with adversity mimetics. The metformin and the DHEA prevented glucose spikes and di type 2 diabetes. And what he showed after a year of this treatment was that the epigenetic clock measured by Horvath, remember this is the DNA methylation patterns, uh, reset in a way that was calculated to take their blood biomarkers back, their blood clock back two and a half years on average. Now that doesn't seem like a lot. And that was after one year of treatment. One year right. of treatment on this, this course of these three drugs bought two and a half years in equivalent biological age. Yeah, and at first I said two and a half years, come on, that's not much. But then I realized if you do that every year, or even every two years, you're immortal. And that's when things get really interesting. But what we don't know is, are these treatments just changing the blood clock or are they changing the whole body? So we need to measure other things, including skin clocks um, and, and blood biomarkers to really know if this is a true aging reset. 